So subscribe below and hit the bell so you get an alert when that was bleh, bleh, bleh. Ah, my mouth. Ah, it's not working. My tongue not working. Bleh, 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 bleh. My tongue ain't working. a good what's in my bag video as much as the next guy. I've watched a ton in January. So today I'm going to show you what's in my bag. And since we're going to Portland, Oregon this next week for an engagement session, we're going to bring you guys along for the ride, which means that for this trip in particular, I'm bringing gear to shoot professionally with, but I'm also bringing computer gear and vlogging gear and fun stuff. So today's what's in my bag video is gonna kind of cover both of those things. We'll start with what I'm actually bringing for the engagement session. That'll kind of cover the, the main professional stuff. And then, and then I'll show you what I add into that to be able to vlog these videos and make, and make sweet YouTubery. And then once we get all the stuff laid out, we're gonna figure out which bag to bring it in because I have the Peak Design bag and then there's there's also the low pro 450 something or other bag. And before we totally dive into it, hit that like button because it really does help. And since, you know, it'll be fun going to Portland and following along, you should subscribe. I think, I think it's a good idea. One other thing to note with all of my gear right now is that 2019 was supposed to be an upgrade year for me. I was gonna upgrade a bunch of my stuff and I didn't. Mainly, I was a little disappointed in what was released last year, but mainly in what wasn't released last year. There was some stuff I was waiting for and it, and it didn't drop. So hopefully some of that will drop this year. I'll mention it as we, as we go along today. All right, first up, what comes with me to an engagement session? First up is I bring my camera. I shoot on the Sony A7R II. And I know what you're gonna say, David, you're two generations behind on the A7R series. But when the A7R III came out, I wasn't really that impressed. So I didn't upgrade from the A7R II. I was like, I'm gonna wait for the A7R IV. And then it came out and it was kind of overkill with 60 megapixels. I already think this camera is overkill at 42.4 megapixels, which is absurd. Even on a compressed file, every time I take a photo, it's like 28 megabytes. But since this year, hopefully, will be an upgrade year, I am either going to get two A7R IVs, but what I'm waiting for is the A7S III. If Sony releases the A7S III and it's awesome, then I'll get one of those and an A7R IV. Because in theory, then I would have the best of the best photo and the best of the best video cameras. And if the A7S photo specs are good enough, then it can act as a backup for my A7R IV. Always have, always have a backup. If your camera goes down and you're on a photo shoot, you better have a backup. And that's why I have two of these. You're, you're on one of them right now. And then this is the other one. And while I'm on a professional shoot, I also run the battery grips for him because if you don't shoot a battery grip, then you know, you do this a lot, it's weird. And if you do shoot a battery grip, you have all the controls, all the same controls that I have up here, I now have here. So when I'm shooting portrait mode, which I shoot a ton of in my work, couples, weddings, things like that, I'm usually in portrait mode, almost always. And then landscape mode is more to like show the scene, show where we are, but then once I get in tight, I'm usually flipping to, to portrait mode, which makes the battery grip very nice. Okay, so two A7R II bodies with battery grips. Now let's move on to the lenses that I bring on my engagement session. And first up, and maybe, Maybe my favorite lens that there is, the 55 millimeter 1.8 from Sony. This thing is amazing. I actually bought this lens before the 50 millimeter G Master came out and then I shot the two side by side and could barely tell the difference in image quality. And because of that, I've kept the 55 1.8, which is 
much smaller and cheaper. Yeah, I think this might be my favorite lens to shoot. If I could only choose one focal length to shoot at for the rest of my life, I think it would be 55. But it might be the second lens that I bring on engagement sessions. The 35 millimeter F 1.4. This thing is a beast. This is a Zeiss lens. This was before Sony moved to their G Master series and they were doing Zeiss lenses. So that's a Zeiss lens. That's a Zeiss lens also. The 55, also a Zeiss lens. This thing is crazy sharp, crazy good. Just, just, there's nothing wrong with it. It's, a, it's amazing. And the last lens that I bring two engagement shoots, that's right, I only bring three lenses, is the 85 millimeter 1.4 G Master. I think this is the only G Master I own. No, I own one more. But this was my first G Master, and you never forget your first. <laughs> there we go, 85 millimeter 1.4. I shoot most of the time on an engagement session when I'm really trying to, to kind of isolate my couple amongst a blurry background of goodness. This is the main lens I shoot. And then the 35 is kind of that wide look so that I can establish my scene. I can let everyone know this is where we are. It's beautiful. The cover is tiny. Look how gorgeous it is. And then the 55 is kind of that mid range. You still see a lot of the scene usually in my images, but the couple is very prominent in the image still. And for those of you that say 35 is the widest that you bring with you on a shoot. Yeah, because if you need it wider, just, just step back and then it gets wider. And on an engagement session, all of these go into my Ona Brixton leather bag, which is kind of a bummer because they don't make this in leather anymore. Ona now only makes this in canvas, I think, so you have to find them secondhand or on eBay. But it's a fantastic, really well-structured bag, like the dividers in there, all right, there they are. They're like really well structured. It's really easy to change lenses. I throw one in here, pull it out, swap it on, bink, bam, boom. Very quick and easy. I love this bag. And then in the front pockets, put my SD cards up here, put some extra batteries over here, and that's it. And for the record, my second camera actually stays in the car. I only shoot one camera when I'm on engagement sessions. I do shoot two camera bodies at a wedding, but weddings are such a different thing. They're fast paced, they're go, 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 go. Things are happening in the moment and you're like, ah, ba, 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 ah, ba, 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 ba. So two camera bodies at a wedding totally makes sense. On a engagement shoot, one camera body is perfect for me. So the second camera is there just as a backup. Okay, something happens to this one. I have another camera, we don't miss a beat. But none of this is going to travel to Oregon in this bag. This bag goes in my checked suitcase. So I take this bag, I fill it with clothes as much as I can, I close it up, and then this goes into my checked bag. That's how I get this bag to Oregon, is I just fill it with clothes, and then that fits nicely in my checked bag. So all of this needs somewhere else to go. Okay, I'll need computer gear while I'm up there. I have the late 2016 15 inch MacBook Pro fully tricked out. There wasn't, there wasn't anything else I could do to this computer to make it better. But it's already getting a little slow editing 4K footage. So I ordered the 16 inch MacBook Pro, but it's not gonna get here before our trip, so. But in the meantime, this one, it, it still really does the job quite well. Uh, to that, I need to wrap the cord up all nicely. Need to fit a MacBook Pro charger in here with my stuff. I also need an Anchor 7 port dongle because if you're using a MacBook Pro these days, you're probably living that dongle life with me. With that, I also bring a Samsung T5 SSD one terabyte hard drive. And if you haven't seen in my previous videos, this, this is Velcro and so is that. So now when I travel on an airplane or in a coffee shop, it's all, it's all just together. There's not like a hard drive sitting next to me or on the armrest of an airplane or anything. It's just boom, clicked right there. Super easy, 
I will do that to my new computer as well. I also bring a Seagate five terabyte hard drive that I got at Costco. They're super cheap these days and an awesome way to back up all your stuff on the road and, and very cheap. And lastly, for computer gear, I gotta bring my magic mouse. MacBook Pro trackpads are very nice and very impressive, but, but man, if I have a little bit of space next to me where I can put a mouse, I am so much faster on my computer than if I'm trying to use the trackpad and then go back to the keyboard and then try, oh. Blah. Next thing that has to go with us is my new Peak Design tech pouch that Morgan got me for Christmas. It is actually super, super impressive. I really like how it organizes everything. It's pretty much everything that was in my last tech pouch is in here now, like, like the aperture light, like cables, uh, intervalometer, cable ties, and sporks. Of course, you know I have two sporks with me at all times because you need sporks when you travel. You really do. Add them to your bag. You're gonna thank me for it. Uh, chapstick, stickers, you know, the normal. Oh, and then in this, I also add an anchor battery pack just cause, you know, gotta keep things charged. Gotta keep that iPhone charged up, you know what I mean? Uh, what else is in there? Velcro ties, if you guys don't have these, Little Velcro ties, I'll link these below also. They're amazing. Oh, did I say this last time? I don't know if this was in the last video. This Joby tripod is so great. It's this teeny tiny tripod and it fits your phone, fits the, the, the Max, fits the, the iPhone Max in there. Easy, boom, I'm watching, I'm watching stuff on the airplane because of that. And lastly for computer stuff, I, I bring my Bose QC35s for the airplane, which is really nice on the airplane. Oh, it's already too quiet. Really nice on the airplane, but also when I'm editing. My AirPod Pros are decent for editing, but they're not, I don't know. These are better. I like editing with these, so I bring them. They are bigger, but worth it. I know, this pile is already getting big. <laughs> okay, so we have the gear to shoot the engagement session. We have all the computer gear. Now for the vlogging bits, the things that I bring so that we can make cool videos to bring you guys along for the adventure. And first up, we're gonna add in another lens and that is the 24 to 70 2.8 G Master from Sony. It's awesome. Now, could I use this to shoot my engagement sessions and not use the 55 or the 35 because this covers that range? Totally. But I really like low depth of field on my 55, go down to 2.0, 1.8. I really like that super low depth of field look. 2.8 on this still gives you really low depth of field, but it's just not the same. The 24 to 70 is the lens that when we walk around and I take photos, I bring this lens with me during the day and I don't have to bring all three of these lenses. I just bring this. Even though the 85 looks better than this at 70, uh, it's close enough. And it shaves my, my tired back from carrying all those lenses. <laughs> Old man voice, no? <laughs> and of course, I also bring the 16 to 35 F4 lens, which is on this camera right now, and I do not have the 2.8 because it is bigger, heavier, and I really only use this lens for vlogging and for really wide shots on wedding days. I rarely use it in an engagement session. I almost always only go to 35 and I just back up from there. And when I'm using this lens at 16 for vlogging or wide shots, I'm never below F4. I'm always above F4, and this lens is Pack sharp. It's an amazing lens. Next lens, sometimes, that I rarely bring. I don't bring it often, but the 70 to 200. I do love this lens. It is an amazing lens. I think you could go 16 to 35, 24 to 70, and 70 to 200, and you've got a sweet kit on your hands. You could also go 35, 55, 85, and you have a sweet kit on your hands. So both kits are awesome. I'm lucky enough that I have them both to choose from. So depending on the shoot, depending on what we're doing, sometimes I bring the 7200 and sometimes I don't. Speaking of lenses that I rarely use, the 90 millimeter F2.8 macro lens is a really, 
really good lens. If you're doing a lot of macro work, even if you're doing portrait work, this is an awesome portrait lens that then doubles as a macro lens. I see a lot of video guys pick this lens up because you can get those really cool, super tight to something shots that are like, eh. oh, all of the second angle shots that you see in these videos are with this lens because it can shoot things very little in my hands and look really good. So any of those shots from over there that you see are this lens, but I'm not, I'm not bringing it on this trip. Just want to let you know it's technically in my bag. Okay, I think this is everything. This is everything, lenses and stuff like that. But then we add in the the road video mic pro, pro, pro. <laughs> the road video mic pro goes on top of the camera when we're vlogging. Very Casey Neistat esque. I don't mind walking around with a big camera in public. While we're on the Casey Neistat point, I do use the Rode, not Rode, Joby Gorillapod. It is the best option I see out there currently. I know there's other options. Put them in the comments. Tell me how much you love them. That's awesome. But I've tried a bunch of them and this one is still, it's still the one that, that I, I use. Although I do need a new one of these. It's gotten very fuzzy on the, on the rubber bits. Okay, with that, we need some we need some ND filters so that when we're out in the sun, we're good. We can keep the 180 rule. We can stay with that buttery smooth 24 frames per second at 1 50th of a second. And these are just Tiffin filters. They're decent, they're not great. I would love Peter's variable stop ND filter, but it's very expensive for an ND filter that I don't use that often. So for now, Tiffin, are great. Another thing that needs an upgrade is the Mavic Pro drone. This is the Mavic Pro 1. The Mavic Pro 2, I just heard too many people saying negative things about it, having problems and issues with it, so I didn't get the Mavic 2, but I heard the Mavic 3 Pro, Mavic Pro 3, I don't know, is coming out soon. They said January, but it's, it's the end of January already, and we have not seen the Mavic Pro 3. And the very last thing we bring is the is the travel tripod that this is also being filmed on, so I can't show it to you. But it's a Mi Photo tripod, and it's fairly small. I looked at the Peak Design one, wasn't impressed. Mi Photo is still the way to go. The Peak Design one's like $600. I could buy three of these tripods for one Peak Design tripod. That's just silly. Ah, I'm gonna rearrange this a little bit. Like, okay, this is pretty much everything that goes with us on a trip where I'm gonna be shooting an engagement session or a wedding or something like that on the trip. And then we're also going to be vlogging it and bringing things to vlog with. This is what's in my bag, 2020. Oh, I didn't even mention, I'm bringing a GoPro Hero 8 Black. GoPro Hero 8 Black and Insta360 ONE X. I will explain why I'm bringing these two and not the ONE R or the GoPro Max or anything like that. These are the two action cameras that are coming with us and the ONE R is not coming with us. I will explain next week. I gotta say though, looking at all of this, this is not gonna fit in any one backpack, I don't think. This won't fit in the in the Protactic backpack or the Peak Design backpack. I might end up bringing, I might end up putting a lot of the, the camera gear stuff in a Pelican case, bring that, and then bring the backpack with the computer gear and the vlog stuff and see how that fits. But then I'd have a checked bag also. Hey, we got Eleanor's bags and her car seat. <laughs> it's gonna be a crazy trip. We're gonna be walking through the airport with like 12 bags. We're gonna be those people. <laughs> All right, with all that, that's what's in the bags. I will I will figure out which bags it's going to fit in later and and tune in tune in next week and you'll see how the heck I packed all of this up to take it with me. And subscribe below, hit the bell and you'll be notified when next week's videos come out. It would also be very cool of you to hit the like button. I like when you hit the like button. I like it. Cramp. I do not know how this is all going to fit. Mm. I mean, I'll figure it out. Just might be a little heavy.